Forced to work from home by your employer? Laid off or feeling depressed at home? Do you want to make money working from anywhere? We'll show you how to do it from your couch. It's time for another episode of the Work From Home Show. Coming to you from their homes in Austin, Texas and Tampa, Florida. Here are your hosts, Adam and Naresh. Welcome back to another episode of the Work From Home Show. I'm Naresh Fissa with Adam Schrader and we have a third person on the line. His name is John Paul Mendoza. He is the co-host of the Position to Win podcast and author of the new book or co-author of the new book, Remote Work for a Better World, Being Productive, Engaged, and Sane in Today's Turbulent Times. John, welcome to the Work From Home Show. Thanks. I'm glad to be here. Let's start the discussion by just touching on your book, Remote Work for a Better World. What do you think, in your experience, are the most important skills to be successful working from home? Well, I I think the first thing, and having done this for a number of years, because I I was working for in a corporate world, and I actually moved out of my office and shut it down and moved to my house long ago. The first thing that I would say is that you need to take it seriously, that when you're working, you are truly working, that there are going to be distractions. There's going to be things going on in your in your house, in your life. There's going to be all kinds of that type of thing. But you have to kind of block that out. So you have to figure out how to make sure that you're very disciplined and that your working time is truly working and not this kind of mishmash of uh, a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Your book, your title, Being Productive, Engaged, and Sane in Today's Turbulent Times, Was this a perfectly timed coincidence or uh, was this something you started, did you literally start writing it whenever COVID came out? So, yeah, the the story goes is that it took me 30 years uh, to write my first book, which is most businesses fail in the first five minutes. And while my co-author and co-conspirator Gabe and I, Gabe Batista and I were working on the launch for the book, you know, NBA shut down, Formula One racing shut down, all of this happened. And he had just flown into Dallas and I said, you know, we got to write a second book. Now, it took me 30 years in a Colombian to get the first one done. (laughs) So he was a little nervous about that because here we're going to launch. And what we did is we assembled a a group of experts or what we believe are experts. And in 17 days, knocked out remote work for a better world and went live with it. And we just knew that this needed to be done. And I had a group of people who had different experiences and different slices of this. And uh, it, it turned out to be the right timing. Sounds like us. <laughs> yeah, so we we actually did not even think of starting a podcast together. We we didn't have an idea or nothing. Once, like you said, that it was the NBA shut down. My friend who works for the NBA, he gave me a call when they were told that they couldn't come into the offices anymore. And he said, hey, like, I got to start working from home. The NBA is doing this across the board or across the world in, in all its corporate offices. And he said, we can have a conversation right now on your best tips to working from home, but what would be even better is if you started a podcast on working from home and how to do it and how to work efficiently and how to make money from home. And he does digital media strategy for the NBA, so that's why he, he had this idea. But um, just kind of overnight, Adam and I, uh, I just sent him a text message. I said, hey, looks like this lockdown's going to be indefinite. Looks like the world's going to change. The economy's going to change. Let's start the podcast. Well, and I, and I think it's, it's very timely and it really helps a lot of people. I, I can tell you that I have been fighting what I call the, the virtualization battle for a very long time. And virtualization, which is what you know, remote work or working from home is part of virtualization, but there's been a lot of lip service to it, and people have written articles, but not, not a lot of people were doing it. In fact, usually if you're going to have a virtual corp, it meant that your brother-in-law was in another state and you needed to give him a job. So, uh, you know, that, that, that would drive that. Your previous book, your one that's, you know, 30 years in the making, most businesses fail in the first five minutes. It just takes them three to five years to realize it. A lot of our listeners, now that they're working from home, they're starting a business, you know, or they've been running a business in the office and now they're doing it virtually. 
how would how do you know you know if you don't want it to take three to five years to realize it how do you know if you succeeded in the first five minutes the way to do it is that you understand if you have a position in the market and if you have a place that allows you to live and survive but most most people what they do is they get a cool idea and they run around and tell all their friends and their family and their you know whoever and uh, you know hey keep this quiet because i don't want the world to steal this wonderful idea and they and they launch and they just start and they do you know and then then they start believing that you know all we have to do is get going well but if you don't have a position if you haven't understood exactly where you fundamentally sit in the market like you know you guys are doing a podcast so what is your position your position is you know work from home that's what we're talking about how to be successful from home well that's a growing trend that's a good positive and that means that that you now have a a place to build from you have a place to go so that means that 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 you have potentially a defensible and a growable position but most businesses most people have no idea of where they're positioned who their competitors are and more importantly who those customers are going to be and and that's why it takes three to five years for people to find out because they waste a lot of time doing things that they think is is really you know working hard on a business but really it's their their uh, they're just a random you know ball in uh, in outer space they're just bouncing around as far as businesses go and small businesses go from home, can you tell us a little bit about your background, your experience working from home, starting businesses from home, and becoming, uh, it, it seems just reading your bio, your, uh, your, your expertise, probably your number one skill is sales and being a good salesman remotely from home. Can you talk a little bit about that? So there's a lot to unpack because, you know, I, I know you do a lot of and, and so anyway, <laughs> so the, the, the number one thing about being successful for me and how I became successful working out of my house or working out of wherever is the realization that, that you need to be able to, to, to get and connect with people. Now, how did that happen? Well, it happened because I realized that especially when I moved to Southern California, I could live on the freeway or I could make myself more effective you know, where I was at and whether that was at home or whether that was you know, in a hotel or wherever that was. So it really started with the idea that, that frankly, my customers were rarely going to ever visit an office, especially all of these executive suites or you know, these people I see who run out and get WeWork. And what made that click for me is that you know, my customers weren't interested in necessarily me having the right furnishings, if you will, especially what I was selling. And therefore, they were more concerned about how I could deliver the message to them effectively and deliver value to them. So that that's where it kind of kicked off is that that sense of it. But the real key thing that I did was I started doing turnarounds and I found out that as a consultant, nobody ever wanted to show up at my office, wherever that office was going to be. They just weren't going to do it because my clients were companies and they said, come to see us. You know, we're, we're not, we're not going to come see you and we're going to, you know, not going to spend any time at that space. So it was that realization that, that that space that people were spending a lot of money to have that prestige of address really doesn't match up to what most people need to do. And I've seen many organizations spend lots of money on space that doesn't do any good. Now you talk about Speed Start Monday and you know if you're a business owner and you are trying to run meetings like you were talking about your sales meetings on Monday mornings how do you cuz so many meetings are just you know half wasted time you come out of it saying man we could have been done with that in 20 minutes how do you actually run a productive meeting especially whenever you're doing it virtually? Well, the first thing that you want to do is you want to commit yourself and then commit your team to when people show up that they should. And, and, and it, it doesn't matter if it's virtual or face to face, but it, virtual is even worse because there's lower barriers to putting them together is that people should show up with a with a list. You know, what, so what's what are we going to cover? What's an agenda? Now, it doesn't have to be so formal that we you know, we have somebody read the meeting agenda and read the notes. And all, but really, you should arrive and say, these are the topics and these are the things I want to cover. You should always prioritize them. What are the most important things you're going to talk about? And you should do that thinking, that planning before you ever get on that call. 
to your point of where there's a lot of waste in meetings, uh, it, it's one of the biggest things that I see in turnarounds is that you can usually eliminate half, if not three quarters of all the meetings that take place because they're really not to, to make a decision. What they are is there to have a bunch of people talk about a, a problem, but not really work to solve the problem. Well, I don't want to sit around and chew the problem over one more time, but we have become group therapy sessions. And so what I do is is eliminate that as much as I possibly can. So show up, have an agenda, know what you're trying to accomplish, know what you're trying to do. Doesn't mean that you can't talk about a lot of things, but what it does mean is that you want to stay on track. And if you do that, you'll become more productive and you'll walk away not feeling like, wow, that was a big giant waste. As far as tech, tech resources go while working from home. In your book, you talk in depth about Zoom. And why do you think Zoom is such a key player as far as successfully working remotely goes? So Zoom is is interesting because again, I didn't seek out Zoom. Um, I've, I've used lots of different communications methods over the years. Um, and, and, you know, I go back to the Jurassic period, which is like WebEx. And uh, in fact, I had a, had a client and I helped him put WebEx in place for his group. And then, I, you know, there was the go to meetings and go to webinars. And then there's a bunch of others. Um, Zoom is just a big issue. For, you know, a big issue for me is that it was light enough and fast enough and easy enough to put into place. So we didn't have to go through this enormous amount of effort just to get a meeting kicked off and going. And we didn't need uh, you know, an IT monk, as I call them. And we, and we didn't need some of those resources because see, like the first WebEx uh, demo I ever got was actually a fake demo. And it was a fake demo because what they did is they did it in a trade show booth and they basically had all of us sitting at, at, uh, you know, at the end of a router and, and, you know, wow, it was great. There was no collisions and we're not dealing with anything. But if you're sitting at home and you're and you're trying to get online, you know, as, as we were, it's, you know, you guys were just talking earlier, you know, you have lots of variety of speed that you're going to get or not get on the Internet. And Zoom just turned out to be the easiest that actually worked. Uh, you know, it's not error free by any stretch of the imagination, but essentially 35 months ago, I started using Zoom and it has been a very positive uh, step for me. Why do you recommend Zoom over, you, you talked a little bit about WebEx, but why Zoom over, let's say Skype or Ring Central or other video conferencing software? Uh, I used to be a big fan of Skype. Microsoft took them over. It, they became more problematic. Uh, you know, there, there's there's lots of things that, that Zoom does right out of the box that, you know, I, as an example, I, I have a green screen in my office. Actually, I have a green screen that I carry with me. So, like, if I go to Las Vegas and I drive to Las Vegas from Southern California, I take the green screen with me. And then I, I just set it up in a hotel room, and away I go with a green screen. Zoom handles that with ease. Uh, I don't know how to do that with Skype. In fact, before we were getting started, I, I didn't know if we were going to do video or not. So I was trying to check it out. Hey, can I put a, can I put a green screen up for Skype? Nope, not really. Uh, so for me, it, it's that ease of use. And, uh, and right now, I probably have about 15 to 20 different backgrounds. And, and, I, and by the way, I always recommend that you use a, a physical, not a virtual green screen. But if, you can do a virtual if you need to. But what it does is, is that it allows you to, to give a certain level of professionalism. So I like that part for Zoom. Skype has, does not seem to have been evolving as well as other things. Uh, and then like Ring Central and Grasshopper, uh, you, you know, I, I have clients who use both of them. I actually have a, you know, have a Grasshopper lines. But what I don't have is, is Zoom seems to work and it works fairly seamlessly. In fact, I've done uh, five Zoom calls today or meetings, I guess, is more appropriate. So you were talking about how you use Zoom because of ease of use and the low barrier to entry there. What have you seen people, you know, you're trying to make it as easy as possible. Whenever you are bringing new people on board, what seems to be kind of the hardest transition for them? You know, is it is it just the meetings or is it the kind of working there or is it just communicating with the team, the people that you never um, potentially have never met before. What has been the kind of biggest shift that you've had to 
deal with in terms of people who are working for you? Well, the, the, the first thing is to tell them that they have to go download, and Zoom requires this, you have to download a client, you have to get it working, you have to get it running. Um, you know, I, I recommend if you're using a PC that you reboot your PC. Uh, you should become friends with the task manager if you're on Windows 10 and kill as many apps as you can. Uh, you have to be just very aware of resource hogging that goes on. Uh, the other thing, so, so what is the difficulty is it's just getting people to to not do what, what we kind of call the, the you know, we, we call it the monkey slap, not to, to denigrate any primates, but uh, essentially people are used to using a cell phone and never doing any reading of any kind of documentation. So all they do is they just they just keep slapping the device until it kind of is in submission and does what they want it to do, and then they stop. And what I say is, you know, here are step-by-step -step methods of what you need to do. Uh, also, the way I utilize Zoom is that we record many of the calls that we do. And because of that, we actually now have a recording of it. Uh, this is very helpful for those who can't attend the meeting because we can also put it then through a service called Otter. Uh, I think it's AI or IO. Anyway, it's Otter, like the, the yeah, little Otter. Furry AI. AI. The, the transcription service. Transcription service, yeah. Yep. And, and it's and a free it's, app. Well, it's a free app for a hundred minutes. Uh, I'm I'm on the six thousand minute plan, and and I and I work very hard to try to see if we can we can use all of our six thousand minutes. But yeah, I, I find that to be you know part of the tool chain that we use, and uh, it helps a lot because that way if somebody is not able to attend a meeting, we have that information. By the way, it's great for doing brainstorming if you're doing uh, you know work in a variety of different ways, and you can capture things. It, it is by the it, we would have never gotten the book done, the remote work for a better world, had we not had Zoom and then recorded everything and then uh, been able to do the transcription. I'm curious, um, Otter, I have it on my phone. I highly recommend it uh, to my friends, my colleagues, my clients. It's even in one of my books. I recommend it as a transcription service. How much is that 6,000 minute plan? Uh, and again, I, I you know, we should probably look it up to be because I think it's like eight bucks a month or something. I mean, it's cheap. So it's oh, like, okay. Well, it's that, like, that's the main thing. It, it doesn't have to be exact. I was just curious, is it, because transcriptions, if you want to hire someone to do 6,000 minutes worth of transcription, we're talking, you know, $6,000. <laughs> well, so. well, I actually more, because, because if you go to rev, rev.com, which I use for a number of years, they, they just went to a buck and a quarter a minute. So, you know, 6,000 yeah. minutes would be $7,500 a month. So yeah, it's like, it's like, I think it's like eight or 10 bucks, but it's cheap. Uh, you know, but, but again, it's back to uh, getting comfortable doing that. Uh, the other thing, and, and you, you had asked the question of what it's like to get people on meetings who are not used to being on meetings is getting people comfortable with the fact that even though we're remote, we're actually in the same space and same time and getting comfortable with having that, uh, if you will, that, that the feeling like you can express yourself and not being on edge about it. So I, I, that, that's a big area. Yeah, and, and going back to otter.ai, it's, I think for our own podcast, what we're doing, if we wanna turn our episodes right now, by the time this episode gets published, we'll have more than 50 episodes. And if we wanna write an ebook or do something with the episodes, it's good to know that I can just go on otter.ai and pay, you know, less than $10 or $20 to get transcriptions done. That's a huge, huge benefit because the alternative would have been paying the $7,000, like you said. Right. And and at that point in time, you, you stop doing it. So, yeah, as an example, I have a, a weekly Facebook uh, live show that I do that's also now going on to YouTube called Raging Verbalist. And uh, we and we have to do tweets against it. We have to do an email. We have to go do some announcements. And I get on with my marketing uh, manager, and we and we just riff on it, and uh, we we toss it through. It, we get on a Zoom call. We toss it through Otter, and uh, very quickly. I mean, she takes notes, but very quickly she's got the whole context, and she can go back and listen to it and go through it. So yeah, highly recommend it. Um, and and then, yeah, I think that the biggest thing about getting people comfortable with working remotely is to is to build out a space that they can that they can work in. And and most people don't. 
necessarily take the time to build the space that they're comfortable with. And, and all that is, is just a little bit of time and discipline. And I know you're going to say, well, but John, you don't know what the size of my, you know, house is, apartment or whatever. Uh, I mean, I've, I've done, I've done zoom calls. Frankly, I, I did a zoom call. This is like the, the craziest thing. We were at a, uh, an Airbnb and the internet went down. Okay. <laughs> and this, and the host, the super host, Allison, I called her up. I said, Hey, we got to get this thing fixed. I've got a live event I'm doing tomorrow morning. I get people on three continents. We got to make this happen. And she said, wow, okay. So she gets a hold of the cable supplier or you know, cable provider. And, and we all know what the cable provider says as well. You know, hey, we're, we're going to make it. We're going to make it. And she was so good. I mean, Allison was so wonderful. And she called me back and said, okay, my husband's going to leave his home office. <laughs> Bring your laptop, plug it in, uh, get set up and do your live event here. And I got to tell you, I was on a TV tray, guys, okay? I was on a TV tray in somebody else's office, and I had to make sure that the backdrop behind me, because I didn't have a green screen at that time, was, was fixed up and done. So all I'm going to say is that whatever your space is, figure out how to make it work. And uh, you know, I, 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 at some point in time, I want to do a, a coffee table book of all the TV trays of all the people who I've met who are really, really successful. And I'm talking about people who like – write screenplays and people who do uh, you know, television shows and people who write lots of amazing books and all, all of them use the TV tray. And, and all I can tell you is go get it, go get a set of wooden TV trays and go figure out how to build your office out. And uh, you know, don't, don't feel bad about it. You have a chapter in your book, uh, interviewing, vetting and hiring people. Can you talk about how you can do that easily? Uh, if you can do it easily, using uh you know not meeting them in person but you know going over zoom and kudos go out to my co-author who was also my brother michael who has looked at like sixty thousand plus uh resumes in his career and we were talking about how, to, how he's using zoom he's a recruiter and uh you know puts people into jobs and one of the biggest things about it is that you again get prepared uh the, the simplest way is that if you are going to do that interview is how do they show up for that interview? I mean, are they wearing, you know, just a, a, a ratty T-shirt? Are they, you know, are, did they comb their hair? Did they brush their teeth? Did they, you know, do they look good? Um, and, you know, so you can get an appearance sense and also how, how sincere they are. Also, if you give them the right prep, you'll see if they can, if, you know, because everybody tells you, I mean, I live, we live in a day where unless you're beyond a certain age, everybody tells you that they're tech savvy. And I, all I can tell you is that that is usually not true. They're really not tech savvy. But if you're tech savvy, what happens is that you can walk in and you can say to them, okay, download the Zoom app, get everything set up, do your test run, do some of these things, and you can get them prepared. And then you can start asking them the interview questions and going through that. And my suggestion is always to have a video feed. And then that way you can see what they look like, see how they act, their demeanor, those types of things. So same interviewing skills that you would have face to face, but now it's it's one step removed and see how well they can respond to that. Because especially today, if you think about it, on, on May 21st, Mark Zuckerberg, Wall Street Journal said, uh, my plan is to go to more remote workers and in fact, move to where half of my workers at Facebook are going to be remote permanently. Uh, that's a big step. That's an amazing restructuring of his company. John, are there any other technologies or resources that you would consider essential as far as working from home goes? I would say that you need to you need to cover the the, the microphone uh, headset issue, and uh, we we spend a little bit of time talking about. It, but for for all of your all of your listeners, is that you need to find something that is consistent and works for you. Now, there's lots of microphones. You could go spend a lot of money on this. My, my hack way of doing it, it's what I do. And it's just, again, it works well for me. It may not work for you. What I did is, is I started talking to people about some of the issues because I have spent lots of money on microphones and various things. And what I use actually is a headset that is used for gamer by gamers. And it's like 75 bucks. I think you could probably get a knockoff on Amazon for half that price. But what it does is that means that you are the mic stand 
And uh, by the way, I always say wire, 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 not wireless, because I don't trust Bluetooth. Bluetooth comes in and out, and it's got a USB connector, and away you go. And, and I've used it on my iPhone through an adapter. I've used it on my iPad. I've used it on my PC, on a Mac, on a Linux box. I've used it on all of those. And the best part about it is that that, that way you have good sound, uh, both for you to listen, because it helps also block out because it's over the ears, blocks out all other sound. And then uh, it has the microphone placed right in front of you. And, and away you go. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's probably, in my mind, the best thing you can get. And uh, it's about 75 bucks. What do you see as the future for work from home? I mean, you talked about how Facebook's going 50%, but what do you see um, in terms of the marketplace coming out of this uh, pandemic and the shutdowns we've seen? I would call it virtualization. And I, and I think there are five key factors. This is the turnaround specialist in me looking at this because I, I see this as the golden age of turnarounds, sadly, but it's going to be the golden age of turnarounds because of how many businesses are have been wounded or mortally wounded by this. And the five things that you get are number one is that you can cut your costs by about 30%. And that's that's good. Uh, number two is that you can increase your sales by 20%. Now, by the way, I believe these are all minimums. And, and number three is you can increase your profits from somewhere to 20 to 30%. So those are all metrics that we can see and there's financial ramifications of it. The fourth thing is that you can now recruit the best people for your specific situation from anywhere. Because once you remove the barrier of physical location, that means I can hire somebody, whether they're in Florida or in Peru or in you know London, doesn't matter. I can go connect with them and hire them and make that work. So I can get the best talent. I can recruit the best talent. And if I build the right virtual environment, in fact, this is a better place to work than having to go work for somebody who says, okay, you need to show up and you need to go do these other things. And the final part, and this depends where you where you fit on this scale, but the final part is, is that if in fact you want to go green, if in fact you want to lower your carbon footprint, virtual is going to be an incredible way to do it. Uh, I can tell you that during the pandemic with all of the, the, the roads open in Southern California, it was like, wow, you know, it's just like one of those survival movies or something. But what's going to happen is you're going to see a lot more people go back to offices. The roads will get clogged. You get all of that. So think about it. Virtualization gives you all five of those benefits. And if you do it right, I think it still provides you with a sense of community and more importantly, a quality of life that you can't get any other way. Now, you're the co-host of the Position to Win podcast. Can you tell people kind of what that uh, what your podcast is about? So the podcast is really based upon the, the book, Most Businesses Fail in the First Five Minutes. And what, what we really talk about is why it is so important to learn how to position yourself at, at its core. Because if you don't position yourself, then how do you position anything else? And most people don't view their career or their life as a marketing exercise, if you will. They view it as, well, it's my life. So we really start from how do you position yourself? How do you position a product, a service, a company, an idea, uh, a concept, a business, a marketplace? How do you position those things? And by doing that, I believe that it gives you a, a incredible advantage and a competitiveness that you don't get any other way. Awesome. Well, John Paul Mendoza, thanks a lot for coming on the Work From Home show. We really appreciate all the great advice that you have given our listeners. Do you have any final thoughts or comments that you want to share with our listeners? I, I do, and, and, and I, I also want to point people to the positiontowinbook.com website position to win book.com you see i got you guys got me so excited i was frothing <laughs> position to win book.com check it out we've got a lot of resources available i'd say the final thoughts are is that in the next three to five years there will be more change that has gone on the and hard to believe in the last 10 or 15 years which has been a massive amount of change there's going to be a lot of dislocation there's going to be a lot of things that that will be upsetting and the real question is, are you going to think about this as an opportunity? Can you take advantage of it? Can you move it to the to your 
place that it's going to work for you? Or in fact, will you be one of those people who will sit there and say, you know, why can't it go back to the way it was? Uh, I'm, I'm here to tell you it's, it's never going back. It's not going to happen. And it's not going to happen just because once you have this shift and this change, we have what I, I believe is an inflection, not a deflection. And I'll finish by saying deflection is you're, you're driving your, your, your vehicle and uh, you know, you're driving down the road and something falls off the back of a truck and you swerve out of the way, scare everybody in the car and you come back and everybody's adrenaline is, is dumped and you're like, wow, we avoided the, the hazard. That's deflection. Inflection means that we're on a different road. We inflect by going to a different place and we're not going back. 80% of the population may never figure this out in the first few years. In fact, we saw that in the last crisis that happened. It took people years to figure it out. By that point in time, a lot of things had gone south for them. So this is an inflection point, and I don't believe we're going to go back to the way it was. And maybe this is like the cherry on the Sunday, because you, you had mentioned Speed Start Monday. Speed Start Monday, for those of you who don't know me, is a sales meeting that I do. It's really a webinar. It used to be a teleseminar. And last Monday, or you know, when I was recording this last Monday, I just did number 822. So that's over 16 years worth of content. I understand what it takes to be able to deliver something. And I've delivered that all over the world. I've delivered it in all different locations. And I have people who are paying for that. That isn't a freebie. That isn't a podcast. That isn't a, you know, a do-over. I have people who are subscribers. And I, and I can tell you that the level of expectation that people have as to the quality of the video, the audio, all of those things continues to rise because we are all in the process of creating some level of content. Any person who is starting a business, one of the questions that you should ask yourself, and this is the final little bonus piece, is what content should I be creating to convince my customers and my market that I am the right person to do business with and I am positioned properly? That's positiontowinbook.com, positiontowinbook.com. Check out John's book. Also, there's johnpaulmendocha.com, M-E-N-D-O-C-H-A.com, and speedselling.com, which you've touched on as well, Uh, speedselling.com. John Paul Mendocha, thanks so much for coming on the Work From Home show. All our homies really appreciate it. Well, thanks, guys. And uh, you know, if people have questions, uh, you know, love to hear what they are and how I might be able to help. Sure. And to all our listeners, if you do have a question for John and for any reason you want us to relay that question to him, reach out to us. Hello at workfromhomeshow.com. Hello at workfromhomeshow.com. Visit our website, workfromhomeshow.com. Get on our mailing list. We got all sorts of freebies there. You can catch all of our previous episodes there as well. We're on Facebook, Twitter, a bunch of other social media. So like us there. Leave us a review. We, we'll, we'll send you more free stuff. If you leave us a review, take a screenshot and email us at hello at workfromhomeshow.com. So thanks a lot to our listeners for sticking with us, for listening to this episode and all of our other episodes. And until next time, keep on working from home. <laughs>